Hi there, Mike MacArthur from the Oshkosh Public Library, here for another bucket of Librarian Learns. This is the series where I take a look at a bit of Oshkosh history that I heard about or thought was interesting or that I've been asked about by someone. And today it's the latter. And it's a little bit of a cheat because it's not technically in Oshkosh, but I found it really interesting. So I'm going to talk about it anyway. Uh, today we're going to look at Terrell's Island. For those who are not quite sure of what I'm referring to, Terrell's Island is located about 12 miles out from Oshkosh and about 5 miles from Omro on Lake Butamore. It's not actually an island these days, more of a peninsula. And today, when someone refers to Terrell's Island, they're usually referring to the 1,200-acre area under the stewardship of the Butamore Conservation Club. This is the site of a nearly 25-year-long restoration and conservation project, which embodies the benefits and challenges of restoring and preserving the natural environment of the Lake Winnebago system. Early historical accounts of upriver lakes like Poygan, Winnicani, and Butamore don't really describe lakes. They, what they really describe are more marshes. This system of marshes supported a diverse environment of emergent and submergent uh, aquatic plant life that in turn supported a really diverse uh, ecosystem of fish, birds, and other animal life. The Menominee and Ho-Chunk people uh, native to the area used to fish and harvest wild rice from these marshes uh, for centuries. But this environment began to change with the arrival of Europeans uh, in the 30s and 1830s and 40s, and it especially started to change in, the, in 1850 with the building of two dams, one in, first in Nina and then next in Menasha. Uh, these dams were built to provide power for the paper mills uh, in Menasha and Nina, and it also allowed them to raise the water levels on Lake Winnebago and through the Fox River uh, system, allowing for easier navigation through these uh, rivers and uh, lakes. As a result, the lakes and rivers today are about three feet higher than they would have been naturally. This successfully made navigation easier, but it also completely wreaked havoc and destroyed the marsh-like ecosystems that existed uh, before Europeans arrived. The higher water levels drowned out a lot of the vegetation. Uh, during heavy raining seasons, the marshes would actually lift up and become kind of floating bogs that would then down, uh, rush down river and get clogged up at, at choke points like uh, the Fox River uh, at Oshkosh to the point where the water was completely impassable. Uh, with all the plant life gone and heavier traffic on the waterways, uh, the water got more turbid or murky and muddy. Uh, that in turn blocked the light from getting to the uh, submergent plant life and all of that pretty much died. And after the plant life was gone, with it went all of the fish and bird life that depend on that environment to survive. Though there were numerous attempts over the years in the 60s and 70s to fix some of these problems, nothing was really big enough or comprehensive enough to make an impact. In 1989, uh, the DNR released the Winnebago Comprehensive Management Plan. Uh, the idea was to fully integrate the DNR programs with those of other agencies with the goal to restore, improve, maintain the ecological diversity and quality and beneficial use of the fish, wildlife, and water resources of the Winnebago system. Uh, the, what would become the Terrells Island Project, that I finally get to start talking about, uh, would fit right into this goal. In 1998, through a public-private partnership between the Wisconsin DNR and the Lake Butamore Conservation Club, the Molinsky Farm uh, was purchased, and this included the area known as Terrells Island. Uh, the Butamore Conservation Club was actually founded by three men in 1994 with the vision to conserve, preserve, and restore uh, the precious endangered wildlife and habitat surrounding Lake Butamore. Another side note, uh, Terrells Island gets its name from the Terrell family, who settled in Omro just after the Civil War. The family later purchased about 200 acres on Lake Butamore. The family eventually started its own aquatic farm and nursery, selling mostly aquatic plants to people hoping to, you know, attract ducks and uh, other fowl that, you know, they could hunt. 
Anywho, back to the project. So in 1997, the first stage of the project was complete, which was the original uh, rough breakwater that encircled about 600 acres. A year later, a carp gate uh, was installed to try to keep as much of the carp out of the system as possible. And the effects from what I'm told were immediate. Everything immediately started getting better. The water clarity improved, which allowed plants and vegetation to take, take root. Uh, you started getting more of those desirable uh, fish and wildlife returning. And the success continued until the mid 2000s. Uh, and then problems arose with the arrival of two birds that were not even uh, in really the area or maybe not even in Wisconsin yet in 97 when this project started. The American white pelican and the double-breasted cormorant. So these are not uh, nuisance or bad birds uh, in and of themselves. Uh, the problem is density. And this Terrells Island project created just the perfect nesting ground for these uh, birds. And by 2010, there were over 1,400 nests counted in the area. Bird droppings alone put enough nutrients into the water to fuel large algae blooms that made the water cloudy and muddy and didn't allow light to penetrate, so all the plant life there died. And once the plant life goes, the desirable fish and bird life uh, disappears with it. In an effort to thin out this uh, massive bird population that had taken nest here, in 2013, the original breakwater was converted into a walkable path that uh, created a 3.7 mile continued loop with about two miles of that uh, jutting out totally into Lake Bunamore. The human foot traffic helps dissuade birds from nesting there. Uh, the DNR also got involved by oiling some of the, the eggs so the eggs couldn't hatch. And the carp were attacked with uh, the pesticide rototoin. And some improvement was made, uh, but apparently not enough. And a new restoration plan was needed. So here I am at the end, uh, in Terrells Island, at the end of what used to be a continuous about two mile path that uh, you know went right into Lake Butamore here. It's absolutely gorgeous, you know, the walk through here. I saw frogs, I think I saw a muskrat, saw some bird, uh, and really kicking myself for not having visited uh, this uh, sanctuary essentially earlier. Starting in 2020, a new series of uh, restoration initiatives uh, began to, again, help revitalize and uh, conserve this area. The first step was to take out about 1,400 feet of break wall that used to be the trail that connected this part of the trail with the other side. Uh, with the hopes of uh, getting the lake water in here, clearing up the water a bit. What used to be a, a closed system uh, is now open and you know, blending back in with the rest of the river system here. Uh, hopefully that uh, clears up the overload, uh, the overabundance of bird uh, bird nutrient loading, which is my favorite phrase. <laughs> the water looks a bit clear. I don't see the thousands of birds uh, that were nesting out here, you know, just a few years ago. I saw a few of them, uh, but uh, it's pretty peaceful and pretty nice today. <laughs> so, hey, I learned something. Wasn't that pretty? As always, if you like these videos, be sure to hit subscribe, hit like, share them on your Facebooks. And with that, I'll see you later.